I was responding to about three to five ODs a day. People overdosing in here, it's much more safe than people overdosing in an alleyway. People can bring illegal street drugs in Toronto to community health centers and they can use them there under supervision and it's all perfectly legal. The reality is people don't know what they're using. So in this one sample, there's how many drugs? Eight, eight drugs. Workers also test those drugs and what they're finding is surprising even experienced drug users. So some of these are 10 to 20% stronger than fentanyl itself. So these combinations are actually incredibly dangerous and we see them all the time. 19 wow. Canadians per day die of overdose. Two locks, like there's yes. a lot of security here, I guess. Um, honestly, no. There really isn't a need for it. We have our supplies, so there's uh, syringes, tourniquets, cookers, sterile water, oxygen tanks as well. Is that in case someone has yes. an overdose? Yes. In just the past three years, community health workers like Khalila Mohammed have checked more than 5,200 illegal street drugs. It's just a pilot program set to end later this year, but they aren't ramping down. They just went digital last month, hoping to turn around results even faster. And they say finding out what's in these drugs is more important than ever. The reality is people don't know what they're using. No it's, one knows what they're using. Exactly. Nobody knows what they're using. Well, because, that's scary, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. There's a lot of benzos going around in fentanyl, a lot. And the scary thing with that is that our naloxone, it only reverses opiates. It does not reverse benzos. So wait, so what you're saying is you're, <laughs> you've changed your overdose reaction. Yes. Because of the unregulated supply and not knowing what's in the drug. Yes, of course. If I were to, to ask, you know, 10 drug users on the street, mm -hmm. would they be aware, do you think, from your experience proactively, that testing is something that they have access to? I would say for clients who don't use safe injection sites or don't use other services in the community, it's not as known about. Someone does give me a substance, that is how much I take. That, this is how much yeah, you take? Yeah, so it's 10% of a point. I'm pretty shocked actually by how little of yeah, an amount you really, need. Yeah, it really is a little, that much. I didn't, I don't know what I was expecting, but I don't <laughs> think it was that. Yeah, it's a teeny tiny amount. It's probably difficult to gain access. Yes. And it's expensive. It definitely is. And so giving any sort of amount away to be tested yeah, that's a tricky sell. Exactly, and that's why I love about the fact that we can take paraphernalia because it's not always viable that we can take substance. So I do have a couple samples already. And I noticed there's no names or anything on no, this. No, so just everything a is yeah, everything is anonymous and how I keep track of samples is through the numbers. Yeah, this oh. one's purple and then this one is blue. So what did the person who was using that suspect those to be? Fentanyl. Both of them? Yes, both of them. Is that like what everybody thinks they're having? Yeah, basically. But the reality is fentanyl may only be a fraction of it, and so getting the drugs to the lab is the only thing that can get that answer. So specialized bike couriers help transport the samples. Have you ever gotten lost in the hospital? Yes. Yeah. yeah. A few times. <laughs> how are you? Good, how you doing? Good, thank you so much. St. Mike's Hospital is one of two Toronto labs receiving and analyzing the drugs. Uh, this just started like within the last month. Yeah, and it's been incredibly uh, useful, efficient. It's been a great, great help. Okay, in the past, what did you used to do? Uh, it was all paper, a lot oh, really? of logs okay. and tracking, and, and all of this has to be um, uh, documented for Health Canada. So of an already small sample, this is an even smaller piece of it. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Incredibly really small going. amount. How many uh, would you measure in a day? Um, anywhere between, could get one, we could get 25. Yeah, so this is the mass spectra, it's what it's called. And so each peak here, or each, uh, I guess, bump, yeah. represents a different drug. And oh, that's... wow. So in this one sample, there's how many drugs? Yeah, so we have, let's see, uh, three, six, eight, eight drugs. So this one was expected to be fentanyl. Right. And yes, fentanyl was in there at about 10%. Mm -hmm. But there was also heroin, 
cocaine, and then uh, these three benzodiazepines. So, so some of these are uh, 10 to 20 percent stronger than fentanyl itself. What does that mix do in the body? All of these are extremely dangerous, high-potency drugs. It further enhances uh, your decrease in breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, and that can lead to a person stop breathing altogether. Hi, how are you? Once the data from the samples is crunched, it's posted online so everybody knows what's in the drug supply and how to better react. Only 5% of the fentanyl samples that we check have only fentanyl in them. Wait, what? So 95% so of the fentanyl samples that we check have fentanyl and other drugs. And these other drugs are the drugs that are even more harmful than the fentanyl. There have been examples where we had like 20 overdoses in a day. We were able to expedite the results. So using this high potency benzo in combination with this high potency opioid was precisely what was causing people to overdose. And we in like real time can uncover that, then put out an alert that we disseminate broadly. And also it like trickles, it trickles outside of Toronto too, right? What kind of pushback do you get to even the premise of having a concept like this. I think a lot of people might hear about our service and think, oh, what is this? Like my taxpayer dollars are paying for quality control of people's illegal drugs. I think either maybe people just don't necessarily know about the service or do kind of understand the value once they understand what the service is actually about. When that information comes back. Yes. What do you do with it? When I deliver results to my service users, I definitely frame things in a way that's easy to understand. It's not huge terms, something very difficult, and it's not like they're going to see a result that says, oh, this is trash dope, I'm going to throw it away. They're still going to use it because the reality is people are sick, people are needing to use, so they're still going to use it. It gives a peace of mind because if they picked up off of someone who they don't normally pick up off of and they see that the substance that they have is not what was intended to be, maybe they may not go back to that same person. Maybe they may get off of someone else. Just I think if there was decriminalization happening, that would take away a lot, a lot of the stigma. So definitely more safe injection sites, more drug checking, um, and it's just, it's baby steps, but I really hope to see that happen. I really do.